Hello and welcome to the first game of day number five of Star Letter Season 6. And we are here with Navi taking on IC Cup. It is going to be one game between these two teams because that is how Star Letter works. Each team faces each other once and you get three points for each win that you get. And at the end of the season, the four teams with the most points move on to the land finals in Kiev. And I will be joined today once again by Kanaz. Welcome back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. And um, before we actually jump ourselves further into the draft, I just have a quickly uh, the overview of, of all the scores so far. There's not been that many games just yet. Not every team has played a game. But we do see that for now Verge Pro is uh, unbeaten. They have won two games, lost zero. Navi have not played a single game yet. IC Cup not played a single game yet either. So um, both teams having a clean slate and they will determine with this game their uh, starting score of the season as we have got ourselves a Coddle, Nyx Assassin, remaining. Wisp and a Bedrider Ban leading Lifestealer to be the first pick Five and Navi instantly remaining. going for Jerokov so they could no, still go for the West Side that. Mag side but so Dying far no. Pick. Yeah uh, these are pretty standard bans I think of uh, as of a couple months ago. We've seen a lot more Lifestealer, Gyrocopter, maybe even Magnus being banned out but these were kind of the four that were big in band every time before the uh, nerfs to Nyx Assassin and Keeper of the Light that made them a little bit less valuable. And there goes Magnus the other way now. Magnus east side. And the lone druid there as well. And a very fast Rubik pick to secure that one for Kuroki, of course. Um, yeah, a bit of a standard pick if he's still in the pool and Kuroki is playing, he's gonna get picked up. I have to say though, I see Cup putting all their cards on the table. They have got three heroes, three lanes. And right now, of course, they could try to put something in the jungle or something like that. But it looks to be like it's going to be an easy time for Navi to ban out those supports that they do not want to face against. And they are actually banning out the clockwork, knowing that IC Cup, of course, also runs that clockwork as a bit of a support. Yeah, a lot of teams running the clockwork as a support as of late, just because he's a little bit easier to really run in such a position. He could use the levels and can make pretty good use of them, but he's still very effective in these tri-lanes. Cogs pretty much just always a powerful ability and if he gets levels eventually it's great it's sort of the same way that it works with a Bane or a Nyx Assassin as a support hero yeah, we have a Chen getting banned out here I mean I guess for Navi they haven't really put that much on the table just yet I mean we have got just a mid hero I guess missing in Ten a way seconds remaining. but they ban out the Chen instead afraid of puppies Chen Five seconds you can do lane anything with a Rubik basically, so the jungle hero definitely still a possibility. And um, I see Cup gonna tick into the bonus time for this one. Yeah, I haven't. I didn't watch the Navi series that they played this week. Are they still doing the different roles where Puppy's been playing farmer in dry lane? Do you know? Um, if you mean yesterday, I wasn't able to uh, really follow those game very closely. Those games right. against uh, EG. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, there's been a lot of games going on. I think both of us were probably casting when this were going on. Yep, <laughs> that is indeed uh, uh, true. Uh, we have got mid heroes getting banned out though. It is going to be the Queen of Pain and another support getting banned out. An aggressive tri lane support, Visage. We have seen a lot in the Eastern qualifiers. So probably a bit of a reply to that one as I'm expecting both teams to have watched those games. And uh, you should still turn your Dota TV mic. Yeah, I just on. saw. Okay. I always forget. Okay. I think mine is all, yeah, otherwise people would have said that already. Cool. Um, so people on Dota TV can also ask, oh yeah, I can't turn, I can't talk two minutes in the past. Okay, well, they'll notice. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I see Cup again taking their seconds. time so Ten far. Seconds. I mean, we still have a lot of mid heroes in that Dendi can just dominate with. We still have the Skyrath Mage in. Who we know he, re he really likes and who we know that Navi has played quite often. And um, because they don't know anything specific that they don't want to be playing against um, in terms of mid, they're just going to be banning out another one of Poppy's hero and it's going to be the Enchantress that is going to be uh, well, shut down, basically. And there is yep. a Shadow Demon ban, no real surprise, so the Bane's still left in the pool. I have to say though, this is this is trouble. This could be trouble because Bane, of course, with the Fiend's Grip, Fiend's Grip channeled spell, channel spells easy to steal for Rubik, and they could really hurt themselves with that as Bane is considered a counter towards a Lifestealer, and if Rubik get, gets that Fiend's Grip up on him, Lifestealer is gonna have trouble. Yeah, Fiend's Grip is so easy to steal from Bane because you can just see him channeling it, Rubik can steal it, immediately cancel it with Slug. the telekinesis as well. Ooh! 
Slark making its way into the hands of Navi, so we're going to see how they decide to run it. I've been yeah. wondering how these teams are going to start playing Slark after the West qualifiers. I guess we'll get a chance to see now. Yeah, I think most people have seen the games that um, Absolute Legends played with the Slark, and they won all their games with Slark. I, I don't know, uh, no, I guess nobody really knows if it was purely because it was actually the Slark, or if it was because, um, you know, seconds, surprise element of a hero that teams normally don't face, as uh, Vekramont in the chat says, remaining. that Poppy wasn't a farming role yesterday, so it were normal roles, and I think we can expect Dandy mid it's on the Slark time. in this case, and it looks like Icy Cup, last hero, gonna get picked up soon, and with the Bane there, they could try to go for an aggressive tri lane, pick up a secondary stun like Elena, like Alashrak, and just go for an aggressive tri lane, and have that lone druid on the safe lane farming. And that should be possible, but it really depends on what they actually want to be doing. I, I mean, they don't really know yet if it's going to be actually a dual lane or a tri lane for Navi. If they pick up a aggressive tri lane lineup, you can almost be certain that Navi is going to be also going for a tri lane. Right now, I, I have to actually say, I mean, it's probably uh, going to be another support because those jungle heroes are already getting banned. Ow, the Triant! I like it. Yeah, starting to see <coughs> Navi use some of the suddenly popular heroes, uh, trying them out as well. Probably both. Either one of these teams can very easily run an aggressive tri lane. Uh, Icy Cup's tri lane is very powerful if they just want to give Lone Druid the safe lane farm, and Darkseer doesn't match up particularly well against Lone Druid, so that probably is going to be the matchup we see. Uh, We'll, it'll probably be both teams try and figure out where the other team is tri laning and try and force the tri versus tri. Yeah, and for people, of course, that have been, you know, at work while the qualifiers were going on for East qualifiers, I don't think Triant has had that of a popular showing in Eastern qualifiers, actually. More like in Western qualifiers. And last Tuesday, when you were casting with me as well, we saw that Triant making immense, having immense impact in that game. Like, every single game that the Triant was in, at least a couple, the first couple that we saw had a Triant in the game. And both teams on both games were very aggressive. And both teams, both games, the one with the Trion, dominating the game in the end. And and that's just that's just it. I mean, if you want to go for an aggressive trial right now, Puppy's gonna punish you for it because if you dive, try to get a kill, there's gonna be living armor. You can't kill that target anymore. Yeah, definitely. And I think Triant hasn't been picked up maybe at all in the Western or Eastern qualifiers, excuse me. Uh and I think that's for very obvious reasons of just the Asian teams tend not to go with very aggressive tower dives as much early on. They go for more standard actual rotation ganks and try and set the kills. Whereas a lot of these times, these Western teams, they'll go very aggressive tower diving. And Tree and Protector, if he gets living armor on whoever you're tower diving, you can turn that fight very easily. Very true, and we are gonna see, uh, by the looks of it, we are gonna see an aggressive trial. Oh, Jackal, be careful there. Ice Path, gonna be trying to stop uh, the Vost from going for anybody, but he will be able to get the rune because Navi just here by one the, the rune spot. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's um, it's not even gonna matter because <laughs> Invis rune gets picked up by the bear on the top lane. Let's see who's playing what. So we already saw Puppy playing the Trade Protector, a Vost will be playing the Gyrocopter. It will be Kuroki on the Rubik, who is surprised, I don't think anybody is, Dendi Slark. And on the top lane we are going to be seeing Funic Towers skipping the clips. And he should be able to get every single last hit hereby, so we're going to see him on top of the last hits. Probably. Oh, oh, I love this! We just like, picks up his Enfeeble as his first pick. That's, you know, that's one of the most annoying spells to fight against. Oh, and they're going to go for a straight away. But I don't think they can do anything here. Puppy trying to get maybe go for Jackal, but you can only just right click, which is actually pretty po powerful, but still. Yeah, you're enfeebling the gyrocopter, but you gotta remember, Tree does 85 damage at level 1 with no stats. Uh, so he just walks up and gives people the big old tree fists and uh, does a lot of damage, so Lifestealer doesn't have to be aware of that. But Host really can't last hit because of this enfeeble. He's sitting here doing 18 damage. Yeah, he has got to get it all from the spell damage that he might be able to throw out with his uh, Rocket Barrage, which he already just tried. I mean, we see actually, I mean, it's an aggressive tri lane from Icy Cup, but it's Navi that now has has two initiations going for them with the Telekinesis into, an, into uh, well, 
<coughs> telekinesis into a rocket barrage, but Ice Path constantly there to stop it, of course. Um, I'm still gonna let you introduce IC Cup while I try not to miss any action because it seems also mid lane is not entirely safe for either party. Alright, we'll go over it quickly then. In the bottom lane for the aggressive try lane, we're gonna have Always Wanna Fly playing the Jakiro. We just zick. He's gonna be on the Bane Elemental. Jackal taking up the Life Stealer. Mid lane's gonna have Resolution on the Magnus. And finally, top lane, we're gonna have Mag playing through it. Yeah, and that's probably the lane where we're not going to be spending that much time on because they should both be fine. Lone Druid can last it under his tower and <clears throat> Phonic is probably not going to try and dive that until he's a bit higher level. And if he is higher level, then that means Lone Druid is higher level as well. And you kind of don't want to be attacking a Lone Druid when you know that he has got an entangle up his sleeve or at least his bear has. So uh, bottom lane and mid lane is where we should be looking at. Of course, both heroes on mid lane, both the Slark and the Magnus. At level 6, we'll be having a big impact ulti. So I'm kind of expecting Denny to try and roam around, maybe Resolution as well, maybe to try and make a change on that bottom lane, because right now, I see Cup not really getting that much, not really getting that much in kills, but that Enfeeble definitely has a big impact on the votes. He can't really last hit. As we see, he has 5. I'm expecting that Russian chat to have something to do with and feeble because, uh, yeah, that's just really, really annoying to deal with. Five last hits for a Vost while Jackal is sitting at 11 for two. Yeah, almost having trouble with the Enfeeble last hits, which makes sense. He's actually doing pretty well, all things considered. He got five last hits while I think he had Enfeeble constantly up. <laughs> and that's just kind of owing to the fact that Navi are sort of winning the tri lane at the moment. Especially since this aggressive tri lane coming out from Isaac doesn't really feel like it's going to be able to kill people with that tree and protector pick. And just kind of really smart oh, laning top up lane. I said we shouldn't be watching here because nothing was going to happen. But Mag actually in a lot of trouble right here. His bear standing uh, behind him would actually be uh, kind of troublesome if he actually died. But Funnic able to get away and um, more importantly Mag able to get away. He was of course the one that was being aggressed on. And he is forced out of the lane towards his base and going to leave Funnic by himself in the top lane for now. Yeah, he's just going to heal up at the phone. It's not worth trying to consumable back up both himself oh, and we do have Dendi in a lot of trouble though everybody chasing everybody here but the living armor helping Dendi and he jumps towards his target and that or towards the target towards the tower should be enough for him to be uh, keeping alive especially since resolution has got no more bottle charges so no more mana and then he will be trying to get the room of four minutes which he actually gets invisibility nicely done for him might be uh, making a turnaround there but nah. Yeah, Resolution is actually looking. getting the kill right there. Nope. Everything close. So, Navi still winning this tri lane bottom. They're kind of going even on farm at the moment. <coughs> Havos still obviously a little bit behind Jackal, but the supports are going to get a lot more experience just from these pulls coming off. And Icy Cup don't really look like they can do anything about it, and they're definitely not getting the kills just because of this treant. Yeah, it is. I mean, it is aggression all around on on the top lane, on the mid lane now. Also, resolution, just getting forced out. He doesn't we have just any zig mana. In the left. Bottom lane. Oh, rocket barrage, and we just zig indeed goes down. Karoki gets the first blood, and that is like aggressive trailing here by failed. Should they rotate the lone druid and jackal, or should they just leave jackal alone, or leave the bottom lane entirely? Well, it's hard to say what the best bet is to do right now. They're sitting here and they it became pretty obvious from Icy Cup or throughout that draft that they were going to be running the aggressive tri lane once they had the life stealer and the lone druid. So Navi just picked the tri lane that they knew would be fine, safe, and they could just pull in. They ran defensively, forced Icy Cup to come to the off lane, and it just kind of set up the situation where they're not really under threat of dying ever. And that's super advantageous for Navi. What they need to do, though, is they just need to try and find kills, probably. And it's going to be kind of hard, yeah. especially with Puppy getting levels on that tree. Yeah, we now see IC Cup trying their best to at least uh, get some uh, get some <laughs> jungle creeps here, denying them to Navi. But yeah, it's not really where you want to be right now, especially not since you are the ones to do decide to run the aggressive trial lane. Not going the way of IC Cup. And uh, we might actually see them trying for something if the supports come a bit closer. Karoki is going to be there with the telekinesis, but it looks like they're going to be playing it safe and going to be continuing to harass the post. Actually, Dendi coming in, looking for a target with the Haze Rune. He's going to be going for Jackal, but he pops a rage. Ice Path going to try to help out, but doesn't shut down Dendi. He's in his ultimate. We just zig getting locked down, and he is going to be going down Slark with the last hit, and he's actually diving with the living armor. He can do that. He has an open wounds, but he is 
Hasted. Cannot be slowed. And now Jackal. Is he gonna continue diving this? There's gonna be another living armor here. And he is gonna be getting another kill. Gyrocopter actually picking up. They're diving behind the tier 2 tower at 6.5 minutes into the game. And they can just do that. Tree and Protector. He does his name justice. Yeah, I was talking about in the draft how it really punishes when the enemy dives your towers. But I didn't really comment on how Living Armor also Dying really enables tower. you to dive towers, towers, which makes him just also a very good pick for the Western scene. And <laughs> Puppy is keeping just Dendi alive, he can dive past two towers, and it really works well with Slark. Uh, just because of how aggressive a hero Slark is, especially with Dendi going for the uh, Pounce Max build, Dying lowers that cooldown very low. We might have Funnick in some trouble, though Resolution actually came top to try and do something. He is also level 6, he's got us RP, but Funnick... He gets the living armor and Resolution knows it's gonna be hopeless for him to uh, waste an ulti on that one. And as you said, I mean, Puppy just keeping that spell on cooldown. It's very low mana cost and he even has eight stick charges. So he can just continue doing that for a long time. Right now it is four to zero on the kill score. It is Navi that is basically dominating every lane. Though, of course, we haven't really talked about Mag on the top lane. He is getting a lot of last hits. He is 44 for two. But is he gonna be, is that gonna be able to be enough? Like, is that enough to stop and the gyro and the slark because mid game aggression is is coming from that v well definitely he's going to have to be concerned about what he's building in the mid game if we had talked about this six months ago when lone druid kind of always went maybe radiance or maelstrom first then it would be an issue but because he can go armlet first it really makes lone druid a lot more powerful in these mid game fights so, if he can get some fire, it's still very good for Oh, team. there goes the score, they want Kuroki, and they will be able to get him, but Living Armor is still there. RP up on two, also gets Denny in there, who just TP'd himself in. Gonna try to pounce, it's gonna be Resolution, and it is safe to TP out, and Jackal should be able to be okay. In five seconds, he has another Rage. He is running for his life with his face boots. It is gonna be not enough, though. There's a pounce, there's the kill, and Denny on the killing spree right now. And oh. that is a two. Or it's actually... It's one for one. One for two. One for one. One for one. That's the first kill that I see Cup get. It's Kuroki. Yeah, it's, but it's trading Rubik for Life Stealer, yeah. and uh, I think Navi will take that trade any day. Yeah, <laughs> I think you're right. And uh, they are maybe trying to defend their tower, Jackal TPing into his tier one. But you see the movements of Navi, like they're not moving. They're like, okay, you know what? Life Stealer TPing in. Who cares? In the mid lane, we have got Slark actually going down. No RP needed for that. That was a solo kill, wasn't it? Yeah, they were fighting each other. I think Dendi maybe had a little bit less mana left than he thought he did. Oh, he's it's complaining about, about a bug. bug. I'm not sure what. I'm not really sure what happened there. It looked like Dendi had the kill secure, and then it looked like he left, and it just didn't do damage to resolution. I'm not sure what happened with that. If it was a bug, or I just maybe I saw it wrong too. But, uh, I'm, I don't know, it looked like he had Resolution completely dead and then suddenly got turned around, then he loses. <coughs> and all of a sudden, it is 5 for 2. Well, those are the kind of kills that I see Cup should find. Be it bugs or not, they should try to find those pickups. Try to use the RP when you can. Of course, they need to have that Bane at level 6 as well to try and get something going with the Slark, perhaps. Try and just... Stop Phonic because we haven't really talked about Phonic. Phonic hasn't TP bottom top. ever. He has just been farming, farming, farming. He is highest up on net worth because he's been tower skipping, mm -hmm. aka not missing any creeps. And he has got his mechanism ready Dying now at 10 minutes into the game. And in theory, this could be a moment where Navi says, okay, you know, we have our mech. Let's start five manning Dota. Well, I would expect them more to start four manning probably and build or create some space for Vos down in that bottom lane. Uh, he really has nothing going on right now. It doesn't bring Dyer's enough really to the fight to even bother coming. Just the level 1 call down. He's sitting at level 7. Actually chose to max Rocket Barrage over Flat Cannon too. Which kind of makes him even less useful for these team 5-man team fights. So probably they'll leave him down here, but they can definitely start formatting and forcing fights. And Lone Druid is sort of in the same boat, so he's unlikely to be in those fights either. It would be 4 versus 4. The only um, upside for IC Cup Dyer's is that it, based on team fight potential in general, you've got that RP on your side. So IC Cup should be pulling out ahead if it comes to that. But for now, Navi is just continuing Dyer's what they were doing. We're just dominating the lanes that they have. They have abandoned the top lane after taking down the tower there. So uh, they are leaving Lone Druid alone to farm. And probably are aiming to end it before Lone Druid is big enough to do anything about it. And it, they are going to be pushing down to the tier 2 right now after taking down a tier 1 bottom. 
<clears throat> and are spiking ahead on all the graphs. Gold graph, experience graph, always wanna fly, lead sheet, slow down, gonna be getting a cooldown on top of his face. Sis, faces, yeah, two. And that's gonna be Gyro come to pick up the last hit. Gold that Havos definitely needs, as you already pointed out, he's a bit behind. <clears throat> yeah, and they should be able to get this tower basically for free now as well, I think up. Really can't afford to just send heroes up there. They know that Navi are going to just chase in anytime they see anyone, especially with that living armor behind them. And, uh, they end up just getting the tier 2 tower for free. Deathly ports to the top lane, saves his tier 1, and the living armor is going to heal it back up. You know, for people wondering, that solo kill, that resolution, that the Bane only just came in. He didn't even get an assist for the kill, so it was a solo kill in the end. So, um, yeah, just wanted to clear that up. I am not stupid. Well, one tier, one tower left, standing on the side of IC Cup. Gonna be the target for Navi, as you see the rotation coming. Four heroes now mid, <coughs> taking a vote with them. Not having Dendi though, Dendi is actually on the top lane trying to kill off bears, but it's just gonna farm for now. The question yeah, we is... We need to watch the Fishman fight with the bears. <coughs> it's not a very fair fight for Fishman, I don't think, but he'll be able to get the kill. Just really wants to keep that tower safe, I think, and doesn't feel like he's needed in that mid lane at the moment. No. Resolution. The Invis rune was spotted by Navi. So the central ward is placed. Of course, this is a perfect opportunity for a fight, and they're gonna try for it. They're gonna have a 3 minute RP infest out as well. Cooldown though, and a mech charge coming off from Navi. Vacuum in there, and that is gonna be only mag for a Rubik so far. Can Navi get more is the question. Always wanna fly, goes down as well as Jackal. Triple kill for a Vost. And that is gonna be the rest of IC Cup on the run. They tried to fight that they had a brilliant opening, but not enough damage to go through in the end. And a mech charge from Funic just making sure that every damage that IC Cup did during that RP was just evaporated. Everything healed up once more. Yeah, and the early mech is just showing its power right here. And uh, actually a really clutch and feeble came out from Bane and Havost at the beginning of that, right as they came out of the RP, and that kept him from killing off basically his entire team through the flat cannon. So they survived a little bit longer than they might have otherwise, and actually I think Jakiro didn't die and would have, or there was someone else that was really low in the fight that got away simply because the flat cannon didn't do its full damage to them. Yeah, Bane, Bane did. Almost, uh, well he got away on very, very low HP. Well, saved himself. But uh, unfortunately, it just they don't have the damage really right now. They see their supports level 5 on the Jakiro Bane sitting at level 5 as well. So they don't have the Fiend's Grip for the follow-up or just the uh, Macro Pyre from Jakiro. If that had come out there for that first player, he would have been pretty much entire Navi squad going down. Yeah. Just that additional burst damage is really all they needed. Indeed, it would have. It's, it's like the, the big combo one more potential that IC Cup has, and Navi is just pushing before it's actually complete. And they're now gonna be going on to the top lane, tier 2 tower in some trouble. IC Cup, they do not have an RP for this one. 14 seconds until it's there. Magnus is in a bit of a tough spot though. He's farming bottom. Does he really want to try and defend this? As he is, you know, he wants to have his blink dagger. He is 1500 gold. Uh, he has 1500 gold in his inventory, needs only 500 to go, about-ish. And uh, you, you don't want to risk that. Maybe they want to try and take down Dendi instead, down. actually. There goes Pounce. Dendi in a lot of trouble, gonna be having an RP on his face, but he had the Pounce already up, still goes down. And that is gonna be a Magnus kill, and that should be almost his blink ready, but it also costs him a tier 2. Yeah, they lose a tier 2, and Lone Druid's gonna have to go back to base to heal, so he's losing some farm time, and they used a reverse polarity for it, so he's not gonna have that for another fight, which means Navi just move into that middle lane. They're gonna take the other two, last tier 2 remaining. Yeah, and then that there's leaves a... Icy Cup awkward position. Yeah, for Navi, it's a, it's a logical path of choice. I mean, take out all the towers, get Roshan after this one, and then push up the high ground and not give Icy Cup any time to recover, any time to farm, and just make sure you get in there before Icy Cup has their supports at level 6. It's quite sad to see the supports indeed not level 6 just yet. Oh, and Feeble once again up on the Vost. It is, uh, it is a level 1 and Feeble only, but still. Funic getting surged away by himself. TP's in. They want to try and follow this. Open wounds up on Puppy. He has his overgrowth, though. He could try to turn this around. Gets a 3-man overgrowth. 
Cold I'm coming down on all three as well. And that is gonna be we just did going down first and the rest of IC Cup fleeing because they cannot withstand that kind of power. And they will see their tier two drop as well. Actually, whoa, puppy, what you doing there? Trying to chase down some people, but not able to He's find anybody. Tree, He's not afraid of anything. <laughs> no. He's a tree, what are they gonna do? Chop him down. You know, have you ever seen bears and trees? You know, those blocks should be possible. Yeah, they, they claw them, but they don't take them all the way down. They just like, climb them and stuff. It doesn't work. He hasn't gotten them yet, and the puppy hasn't died, I don't think, though. He's all 3 They haven't killed him thus far. Probably not worried about it. Oh, no, and Tangle off on a post, though. Here comes a nice vacuum. We just zig already going down. It is going to be the Jero that still goes down, so... Uh, a Vost dropped. Navi, can they still stand here? Can they still fight this without him? It looks like they want to. It looks like they might be able to buy back. And an RP he gets in there. Resolution able to try and turn this around. It is gonna be Jackal that is the one to kill off the tree and protector down with the living armor. Resolution running himself away. Nightmare upon Mag, making him be out of play. They are still able to kill off the Rubik though, as uh, Magnus still gets chased down by Funic. And uh, Dendi getting uh, stuck in a nightmare, actually, he's in a lot of trouble. Pounce is up to Jackal, there goes the Rage, it goes invisible, do they have any vision? No. They don't. And he just is able to walk too far. Yeah, And he does have an Enfeeble up on him, he could actually... Nah, he couldn't. He is, he is safe. It was a good defense for my C Cup, good for them to take the fight outside of their base, so their tier 3 wasn't in any danger, and... Avos, after buying back, he couldn't really participate that much in the fight anymore, I felt like. Or did I miss see that? For uh, Avos? Yeah. No, he bought back and he sort of made it there after Navi Rory on the back foot after they got RP'd, so he didn't do too much. Just kind of went to farming. Which is pretty much what he needed to do at that point. He wasn't going, there wasn't actually going to be any more team fighting going on, it was just the last little skirmishes broken up and he can't really help too much with that at this point. He actually picks up an ultimate orb so it looks like he's going to go for the Manta style in this particular game, not rushing that BKB. There goes Shen. Gonna be the next one. Oh, Manta style is pretty nice in the gyro if you want to try to push, I guess. They don't really have to worry about having too much damage because Lifestealer doesn't really have anything just yet. No armlet for him just yet. Basically the only damage that they are having to worry about is the bear and the spell damage that they can do, which is pretty big, of course, but then you have the mechanism to heal you up after the first damage. They have another RP up on three. Shockwave going through as well. Nice ice path as well. Can they get it done, Mechropire? But there's the pipe for Navi, and that is gonna be a cooldown. Bane going down to Resolution, trying to TP out. Mag TP'd out, and that is just everything thrown out there for my seek up. The Mechropire, the RP, and then losing a Bane. And if you look at the health bars, it is only a Vost that is kind of looking like he was in a bit of trouble and he's getting healed up already again. Yeah, they have a lot of heals, so it's not really worrisome for them if someone just gets hurt a little bit. As long as they don't go completely down. And uh, all those spells being on cooldown for Icy Cup now open to Broshan. Pretty easy for Navi, I think. Uh, looks like Icy Cup aren't even really playing contested. They have to know that they just went back to Roshan if they're yeah. not trying to pressure the tier threes. They, they can't do anything right now. They're, they're just trying to get as much out of this break from aggression, I guess, as possible. They need to get more farm up. They do have the bait at level six, but he did use his fiend script in the previous fight, and you know it's it's a pretty long cooldown still. Yeah, he actually uh, used it and immediately got caught in that vacuum that came out uh. from uh, Funic. Which broke it, so didn't actually do too much. And there are so many things that can break it, and telekinesis there as well. We're just <laughs> getting killed off because he is, I mean, he's level 6 in a game where a gyro is level 11, so level 2 flat cannon coming down upon you, that's that's painful. And then you have a level 13 slark, it is, it is pretty painful to be a level 6 in this game, and both supports of IC Cup are level 6. Navi supports both level 8, plus they have the help of a mechanism and a pipe, and those are both items, luxury items if I may call them, that IC Cup cannot afford, because who is building them? Actually, they've decided Mag shall build them, and he has got his headdress now ready, but he is building towards the mechanism. But it's not, it's far from done. Yeah, it's gonna be a while before we actually see that mech come up, and he got that blink dagger, and he's gotten quite a few 
uh, big RPs as well behind that they don't have the follow up. And it might have even been better for him to just try and get these team fight items like the mech to try and combat what Navi have going on for them. Just the staying power in these fights. They know they're not really going to be able to burst Navi down, especially now that the pipe is picked up on Funic. They were kind of relying on the magic damage from heroes like Jakiro to uh, try and take down the entire team, and they just can't hope to do that anymore. Now they have to wait it out and turtle it out until Jackal was farmed up a bit more. Has got his armor about ready. Lone Druid has to be farmed up a bit more. I mean, his bear only has an armlet, and that's it. Where is the bear? There he is. I mean, the question is how much time is, is Navi going to give them? Because I don't think it's going to be that much time. We see them gathering up in mid lane once again. They've got Nages. They've got Pipe and Mech. They've got everything they want to. Call down in 17 seconds again, and they can just go for it. Yeah, I would expect them to be forcing the issue within the next two and a half minutes, uh, just for the attempt of, with Aegis, and it looks like they're just going to do it right now, actually. And that's a Lincoln's actually picked <laughs> that's up That's a most? Lincoln's on the most. That's Pinoy Dota? Right? No, that that's <laughs> like, oh my god, I'm getting so incredibly annoyed by that I'm feeble all the, all the beep time. I'm going to build a Lincoln's for this one. I mean, that's I guess he can do it. Navi are ahead, I guess. Uh, yeah. Doesn't even need damage on JR Copter, just build whatever I want. <laughs> no Enfeeble, no Fiend Script. I think Avos is pretty happy with himself right now. <laughs> Ice Paths are still gonna hit, but you know. He really doesn't. I, I, I can understand him, like, from from minute minute one. First skill point, gets Enfeeble. That, that's as a carry, that must annoy you so incredibly much. Uh, as he still gets it anyway, but you know, he blocked a couple. Vacuum in there, we just sick already going down. Bear in some trouble, but gonna be pulled out again. Um, I'm not sure why we just sick was standing so far front. Of course, he got vacuumed a bit more in, but how was it? Ah, oh, RP! Up on three, up on four, but the pipe, the mech, Navi, they turn it around. Jackal in a lot of trouble. Jackal going down. Vos in a lot of trouble, but he has an Aegis, so he is just fine. Three dead on the side of IC Cup. And there goes the bear as he gets stunned. And he is going to be able to make it out. He is a very tanky bear after all, but not V. They can just continue this. Pounce up. We just, we just zig. We just zig just goes down again. Always want to fly. Should be able to be safe unless for Kuroki catches up. Kuroki actually catches up. Because he just blinked himself forward, double kill for him. And that is only one bear left alive on the side of IC Cup with his master, that is. The barracks will go down, IC Cup. 15k gold behind, 7,500 experience behind. What's their game plan now? Apparently it's not yet giving up. They still have some hope. I don't know how much actual hope they have at this point. They might be just thinking they want to play it out and see what happens, see if they can get some fights. Where they uh, take some kills, but there isn't much chance that they're coming back to win the game. They're getting really big RPs, and normally you'd say, well, RP, that can turn the fight if they just get a really big one, but he's been getting like three, four man RPs pretty yeah. much every time on Resolution. There's just not enough damage. Oh, and Resolution is not gonna get it anymore either. He's just gonna go down. Ice Path Rubik MVP. Here comes an Ice Path from the other dude. But it's only delaying Navi, it's not really hurting them at all. They haven't backed off and their mana bars, their HP bars, they're just looking just fine. Pipe goes up, looking for a fight, looking for always want to fly. Forced to back out, overgrowth up on Jackal. There's a damage though, and Tangle up on a Vos might do something, but I don't think it does. Infest in, infest out, vacuum in there, it is gonna be again Bane dying. Anybody surprised? Under and again, I see Cup force into the base. They don't really die this time, which is good for them, but they can't really do anything to stop Navi. As you said, they get four man RPs, they get perfect RPs, that's all fine. But the moment that the RP is over, you've got yourselves a mech, a pipe, and a tree with living armor, leech seed, AoE heals for everybody, and everything is just fine again. Yeah, Navi have this sort of staying power that really just lets them take these fights constantly in the enemy base. And I see Cop moving around again. They, it just feels like their attempts really don't do anything. Well, there goes another two-man RP, but Resolution, he gets telekinesis. Dendi actually taking a lot of damage, but again, mech charge. 
And hello, Rubik RP up on three. We just zig this time the last one alive from those three, but he's still gonna be going down. Mag to follow suit, and there finally is the GG. Navi dominating the lanes, not giving IC Cup any chance to get back into this game, and are gonna be getting a team wipe out of that fight. And um, gonna be getting the first win to their name in Star Ladder Season Six. Oh, look at that! The admin even killed the ancient. I think that's like the first time I've ever seen someone. No, well, it's uh, it's an admin command. Yeah, I know. I never seen them actually use it though. They ha they have been starting to use it since this week. I think since the Eastern qualifiers. Okay. All right. Yeah. I knew it's been one for a while. It's just yeah. I feel like half the time the admins don't ever. No, yeah, they don't really use it. Use it that we much. just sit there and watch it until it ends. <laughs> so not a very close game. Just Navi dominant performance, and of course their laning was just so strong. Tree and Protector gives that to you, and you need to have a plan for how you're going to beat it. Yeah, we'll see, um, we'll see hopefully a more even game next game, even though on paper it doesn't look like it's gonna be it. Um, there are two games of Starlighter today, it is uh, this one that we just saw, Navi IC Cup, and we are gonna be seeing in just uh, 25 minutes, we'll see Mouse Sports taking on TCM, and uh, that will be a game of, well, I think it's the first game of at least... TCM, it's gonna be the second or third for Mouse Sports, maybe the second. Yeah, they played against Fnatic earlier. So, um, let's see how they're gonna be do uh, how that game is gonna be going because this game, as you said, it was just pretty one sided in the end. Yeah, I feel like most of the Starliner games have been this way, though. No, These, that's uh, so like... not true. We've had good games. Yeah, Some have been one sided and, and actually very entertaining while being one sided. That's true. There have been really entertaining games that have been just kind of almost stomps as well. This one was just Navi constantly putting the pressure on, never yeah. really stopped, and Icy Cup flailing around, hoping they could get a kill and not really succeeding. Yeah, well, they got seven kills in the end. Oh well. We're going to be seeing another game, so this is Starlighter Season 6. I am Shiver. You can find me on Twitter.com slash Shiver Gaming. Casting with me is Kanaz. If you want to find him on Twitter, you can go to Twitter.com slash Kanaz Dota, written down as says as it says on the stream which is dota at the end and uh, we are going to be getting into the next game of starlighter season six day name day, day number five and game number two stick around for a more dota 2 action coming your way in just a moment Season 6 of the legendary Starlighter TV series. 16 top European teams, 120 season matches plus an epic land final voiced by your favorite shoutcasters. Watch the Starlighter TV matches using your Dota 2 client. Get an exclusive Starlighter HUD. Tickets on sale now. <laughs> 